IQ. I had a wife I loved. I had a family and a home. ABC for Life premiered Tuesday at 10 p.m. And ladies and gentlemen, if you missed it, you missed a very good show. Great, great plot based on a true story. And the gentleman playing the main character, Aaron Wallace, he knocked it out the park. I started thinking that I was watching Denzel because he started talking like Denzel a lot in the story. And we're going to break the whole thing down right now. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to catch me on the podcast because I do dub my YouTube videos with the podcast. And anytime you have questions, concerns, or comments, just hit me on Instagram, man. It's easier to communicate with you all via Instagram. This story is based on a true story of Aaron Wallace and what happened to Aaron Wallace. And they go through this in the very first episode. He was a club owner. He was with his wife and they just started a family. And one night, someone was drug trafficking in his club and they blamed it on him and they had a butthole district attorney that decided that, you know what, we're gonna pin it on this black dude that owns this club, send him to jail. His dilemma was he could've took a plea deal, said he was guilty, and be released within 12 years, which upset his wife that he didn't do that because he felt like he was innocent. So instead of taking that plea deal, he fought for his innocence and lost. Now he's in jail for life. And the story picks up right after that while he's in jail. He's gone through, found some loopholes in the legal system, got his law degree, and is representing people in jail to defend them against all these lies, scams, and things that the district attorney do to throw them under the bus. And his wife is helping him out. However, let me tell you about his wife played by Joy Bryant. When she finds out he's not coming home, she winds up getting into a relationship with one of his best friends. I was like, damn. And their teenage daughter can't stand the best friend because she still feels like, I love my daddy. When is he going to come home? So that was something, a plot um, barrier looming around in the background that made things a little bit more interesting. And on top of that, he's representing this guy that he considers to be his friend who was accused of drugging an Anglo-Saxon female. He's like a Hispanic minority. And the DA screwed this guy over. And the district attorney's office that put Aaron Wallace in jail is actually trying to go against the guy Aaron Wallace is defending. And they are very upset because this black dude done found a loophole to get his law degree in jail. It wasn't Strayer University, but it was one of those, and he got it. And as they're going through this case, they are throwing this poor man up against the wall. I mean, they're cheating. In one instance, when he needed to be at the courtroom at a certain time, the district attorney had the guy driving the bus circumvent them two hours so he wouldn't be on time. I'm like, man, come on now. And so Aaron Wallace is getting more and more frustrated because he knows this guy is innocent. This guy has a note that the girl gave him the night she was drugged saying that he didn't do it, saying that he didn't drug her, saying she did it. He tried to warn her not to take these drugs. And the district attorney's office is fighting like hell not to have this evidence put in there. And so through the course of this episode, Aaron Wallace has to figure out that he's got to get a little dirty. Another thing that makes this story very interesting, the warden of this particular jail that Aaron is in, she's actually a progressive minded warden and she's helping him with everything he's doing, but she's caught in a quagmire because she's lesbian and her wife, Anna Harrison, is running for district um, attorney's office against the district attorney that's being an a-hole and throwing all these black folks and minorities in jail. So you've got that looming. And so as um, Aaron Wallace is picking up steam with his case and using the news to help buffer his point of view, the warden is coming at him like, you know, I've been trying to help you, but you're not helping my wife in her efforts to become district attorney. You need to find another way. So he enlists the help of his wife, 
Aaron Wallace enlisted the help of his wife. They went and remade a copy of this letter, got it in there, and right at the very last second before he had to go, he was able to get this to the, get this information to the wife. She walked out, and he was able to get the young lady who lied a couple of years ago and said that her boyfriend gave her the drugs because. Her parents didn't want her having sex with someone who was 18 and she was like 16 or something to that degree. Aaron threw all the barriers that they threw at him, through the district attorney, through the warden who wanted him to chill down, through everything, was able to get that young lady on the witness stand, made her cry, she confessed to the whole thing, and he won his very first case for an inmate, got him his freedom, family's happy, but you know that district attorney is hot. And the district attorney is played by Boris McKeever. His name is Glenn Maskins. And he is hot. He is the one that put Aaron in jail. And he's mad about this. So you know at some point in time, he's going to try to entangle uh, Miss Mastery, who is the person that leads the jailhouse, the warden of the jailhouse, and her wife, Anna Harrison, he's going to try to tie them up in some kind of legal conspiracy or something to get them in trouble before this is all over with. And at the very end, Aaron was able to see his daughter, but his daughter was a little timid because she was holding on to a secret as a young teenager. Guess what, y'all? She was pregnant. And you know what the daddy had to say? He wasn't even mad. He was like, I'm just happy to be a granddad. I'm going to find me a way to get out of this jailhouse and be a grandfather to your kid. I thank you for the love. Continue to love me. And I think we could start to see a shift in the wife because the wife was just adamant he's never going to get out. She had no hope. She was telling her daughter not to believe that he was going to get out. I think that that moment after he won that case, and watching him interact with his daughter, she had a shift in her mind that there could be hope. And ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be a great show. I love shows based on true stories and this was definitely a true story. You guys should tune in and let me know what you guys think about the show that have watched it and will you continue to follow my reviews of this show. Aaron Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, did his best Denzel and he knocked it out the park. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe, go get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram, ladies and gentlemen. Send me your messages. Send me your comments. Follow the podcast. Be sure to check out my other channel, the Life Game Reviews channel. We're doing some different things over there, but we also back up our content over there as well. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.